Hi, it's Billy from Sweetie Darling and today I'm going to show you how to make an elephant pool cake. Now I've started off here with a pre-iced cake. I will put a link below through to my tutorial for how to cover a cake in fondant if you need to see that stage. But this, I'm starting off with it already iced and just concentrating on the decorating bit. So the first stage for my elephant pool cake is to make the pool. So for this, I have got some uh, blue sugar paste, Renshaw dark egg blue, rolling out just a piece of fondant using a large circle cutter to cut out a circle, and then painting some water on the top of my cake and laying the circle on top. If you don't want an even shape pool, then you can roll out your fondant and then use a cutting wheel to cut out a wibbly wobbly shape, whatever shape pool or pond that you want to do, but I just wanted a nice round circle topper for my cake, so that's why I've gone with that. Once that was on, I wanted to make a grass border, so I've done two grass borders on my cake, one around the pool and one around the base of the cake. Now the one around the base of the cake is just green fondant rolled into a strip. Now if you struggle with this with fondant, use gum paste or flower paste instead, because you can run it more thinly it's easier to cut the grass shape out but you can use fondant as long as it's a strong fondant I would go for Massachino I wouldn't use Renishaw for this bit so you roll it out into a strip then I use a large knife to cut a straight edge at the bottom and then I use the cutting wheel to cut teeth grass teeth out of the green fondant and I had some taller than others some shorter some narrower some wider so it was all just a variation of little teeth shapes I then painted water around the bottom edge of the cake and then stuck the grass trim to it. Now I made sure I started at the front in, with the middle of the strip and wrapped it around the cake so that any joins would be towards the back of the cake and you don't, I don't want to join right at the front of the cake. Although that being said, I used blossom flowers to cover up the joins in the grass and just to dot around my grass randomly anyway. So if you do have a join that's at the front of the cake, it can be covered. For the grass around my pool, I just rolled little balls of green fondant and then put my finger at one end and rolled until it narrowed it down into a point and then I just used some water painted around the outside of the pool to stick all those bits of grass cones around the outside. Once that was done, I could fill my pool with water. Now this is probably my favorite bit still. I've loved doing this kind of thing since I first started cake decorating. I still really enjoy it now. It's just something so satisfying about it. So I use piping jelly and put it into my pool. Now you can spread this around whatever way you want. You can use a silicone brush, a palette knife, the back of a spoon, a paintbrush, whatever you want and whatever's easiest for you to spread around pipe and jelly and push it to the edges. Now you don't want to overfill this and how much you fill it will depend on the consistency of your pipe and jelly as well. I used to have a pipe and jelly that was um, quite runny, actually it's really runny and if I put this much into there it actually would have seeped out past the grass so with that pipe and jelly I have to do a really really thin amount and do it so it's just a thin layer across the top of the fondant. With this pipe and jelly you can see it's really quite thick and almost gel like so I could pile it in there and then spread it around. I actually had to pile it in there because it wasn't very spreadable and it was leaving dry looking patches across my fondant so I had to use more of it but it doesn't spread it's not going to go anywhere. But this is amazing it instantly makes anything like this looks like an actual pool now which I just love it looks so like it's actually full of water and I want to dive right on in. To add rocks around my pool and around my board I marbled together some paste so I had some white in there, some black, I put some grey in and a little bit of brown and I just mix it together but not completely mix it together although I mix it more than I would have liked to. I like a really marbly pebble normally and I just slightly overdid it on this so it's a very subtle marble but still a marble nonetheless they still look rock like so with that I could roll just different size balls, roll some of them into more oval shapes, flatten some of them slightly, it doesn't matter what shape they are, doesn't really matter what size they are and then I could stack them up in different places around my cake so I did a couple of larger piles, I put some in the pond, some outside the pond, dotted some around randomly elsewhere. It's a simple and quite a quick detail but I think it's a really nice detail that adds a lot to the cake. Once I've added my rocks I wanted to add some flowers. Now for these I actually had some, I always have some pre-made flowers so I have a box where I just keep some dried sugar flowers in, blossoms, some little stars, uh, daisies, things like that that I can just grab as and when I need. They often get dotted on just like girly pretty cakes to finish them nice and it's much easier to have a load ready made. So these were made from just flower paste coloured and PME blossom plunger cutters cut out and then they're pushed down into foam so they dry up in a cup shape 
if you've seen the plunger cutters, they have um, the bit that you push down, and when you push it down, there's like a point that comes out the bottom of the flower bit. That bit, when it's on foam, will push into the foam and leave the flower behind with the flower sort of cut up like that. So that's how I made these, and I just piped a dot of royal icing in them and patted it down with a damp paintbrush so it's a nice rounded dot, not a pointy dot. And that is literally, I just make lots and lots of these flowers in different colours and then leave them to dry and then put them in a cake box until I need them. So I just use some water to stick some of these flowers around my grass trim of my cake and around the grass around my pool as well. Now for the elephant, I've actually started modelling in just flower paste now. I used to model in modelling paste and then I read Carlo Sulichetti. He does Animation and Sugar. He's got two books, Animation and Sugar 1, Animation and Sugar 2. Both are incredible. Animation and Sugar 2 has got more instructions in it because I guess he, he knows now more what people are looking for in the, in the directions of the book. So either way, he uses flower paste. Squire's Kitchen Flower Paste, which is what I use for my flowers. He uses that for modelling. Now I tried, I don't know if you remember in my unboxing video of my cake room vlog, I bought some Squire's Kitchen modelling paste, which I thought I'd like to try, but through the packaging it felt like fondant. It didn't feel any thicker than fondant. I tried to model with that and it pretty much was fondant. Like it didn't, it's, it probably dries harder than fondant, but as I was actually working with it, there was no structure to it, no real stability, uh, no elasticity. It was just like using a fondant. I'm not a particularly good fondant at that. So not a fan of that, but I tried Squire's Kitchen florist paste for modelling and I love it. It's not something I've ever considered doing before because flower paste is normally what I'd use for flowers. It's quite a tough paste um, and I consider that it would dry out too quickly to be able to do figures. But if it was drying out, I just mixed a little bit of treks into it. Not so much that it wouldn't dry, but just a little bit to buy myself a bit of time. And it worked really, really well. So this is my new favourite modelling paste now. So I used the rainbow dust grey and then I started off by rolling a ball of paste for the body and then I narrowed one end of it slightly by putting my hands into a V shape and rolling the paste so it tapered it up to I suppose where a neck would be. I then rolled two even sized balls of paste and rolled those into cone shapes and then flattened one end of the cone down. Now this was to make elephant's front legs so I needed wider sections at the bottom and narrower sections at the top. Now they don't need to be a length to reach all the way up to the neck. By the time you've made the head and the trunk that is going to cover the top of the legs. So I have these cones that are tapered inwards, they just stick to the front of the body and I attach those with a bit of water. And whilst they were still soft I used a, I think I used the end of a palette knife, I can't remember, I think it was the end of a tiny palette knife or a scalpel, it doesn't really matter as long as there's a blade, uh, to indent two lines into the end of the foot so that it gave the impression of some toes being there. I then rolled two balls which I rolled into slight ovals and flattened down into oval disc shapes and started stuck those just behind where the front feet were. I again used either a pant knife or a scalp, but I can't remember which one, but I indented two toe lines. For the head, that is a ball of paste, rolled really smooth so there's no cracks, and then I angle my hands and roll and roll and roll. So it starts to make it into a cone, but instead of rolling right at the very end of the cone, I bring my hands up slightly and continue to roll so that it just elongates a section of the paste there. And I keep going until I have, um, I don't know what this would be, but it's like a ball, a ball that then tapers down into a very long section at the bottom and it looks really weird. It reminds me of a, have you seen those gas masks ever? I don't know where I've seen them, so it looks like they're like probably in a film, but those gas masks that have like the tube coming off them, that's what it reminds me of until it has the ears. So I don't like elephants at all until they have their ears. To stick the head on the body, I used water, but I needed a support there because this head is quite heavy and the trunk is there, it's going to want to come forward, so I just push a cocktail stick into the body and then put the head onto that and use some water behind it so it sticks. If you're struggling with water you can also use some royal icing which will hold it much more firmly. Now the trunk can be however you want it, you can leave it hanging or you can curve it up slightly. If you want it curved up quite a lot you can scrunch up some cling film and just put it underneath the elephant. You have to do this off the cake plate. So the elephant's on the cake at this stage. You put cling film underneath the trunk, it's going to sit in that water and it's going to get very messy when you pull the cling film away. So I'd make the elephant off the cake and then once it's all dry you can then put it on the cake. I, I use a little cell stick tool to roll into the end of the trunk 
and then pinch it so it gets like the, you know how they can pick stuff up with the trunks, I wanted it to have that sort of effect. And then I roll three tiny little tri teardrop shapes of the duck egg blue and use some water to stick those into the trunk so they're like those playing with water. Or she, she, she's got like pretty like eyelashes coming out, so she's a she. For the eyes I used a ball tool and indented two eye sockets into the front of the head. Now I didn't just leave them as round, I sort of moved the ball tool up and down slightly so that they were actual ovals in there. I then rolled two small ovals of black paste and stuck those into the eye sockets with some water. And I rolled two really thin stitches of black paste and stuck those as eyebrows above the eyes. Now the trick with these to make it look like she is a happy elephant and not a concerned, depressed or angry elephant is to have the middle of the eyebrows higher than the outside and to have them quite high up on the head as well. I then rolled two of the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest sausages of black paste, cut just the ends away that were tapered up down into a point and then used some water and stuck two small black sections to the corners of the eyes coming upwards slightly so she had some fluttery eyelash looking bits. If you want a boy elephant you can leave this bit off. And I then used some white paste colour again I think this was something that I got in my cake Raw video but Sugar Flare now make a white paste colour so I just did a tiny paintbrush into there and then put a blob of white into each eye as a highlight. And that very simple step will really transform a model if you do it. It really brings life to the eyes even though it's very cartoony and caricature-y. Adding a little twinkle or highlight really gives Gives the character some personality. Now the ears of an elephant are my favourite thing to do really with modelling. They seem like they're going to be tricky but they're surprisingly easy when you start doing them. So I have a ball of grey paste, I roll it into a slight cone shape and then the fatter end of the cone I just tease out into both directions with my fingers. Um, I keep pinching this section in so it's narrower, so the smaller side of the cone I keep pinching in. The wider side I just keep teasing out so that it makes a vague heart shape really. And I make sure everything's nice and flattened down and not too thick and chunky because if they're too thick the ears are going to be too heavy and they're going to want to slide off the body. I do the same shape with a smaller piece of pink paste, it is really thin, and then I stick the pink over the grey. I have to repeat this of course for the other side so there are two ears. And if you can get them similar it's best, although it's not hugely noticeable once it's on the cake especially if it's a, a cartoony elephant like mine is. It doesn't matter if the ears are a little bit out. Mine, I don't think, actually I know, I was going to be like, I don't think mine have ever been identical. I know, they have never been identical. There's no way. If you really, really, really want them to be identical, print out a template or draw a template and then work to that. I used water to attach my ears, so I painted some water on the back of the head. And, no, I didn't. I painted some water on the front of the ears on the narrow comb bit and then pressed them onto the back of the head and then just arranged them so they looked right. Uh, as I'm looking at the elephant, the right ear was dropping down so it must have been just slightly too thick and therefore too heavy and I had to put some royal icing in there instead and then prop it up with some cream film until that set and then that held it absolutely fine. Now the message on this cake I put around the front of the cake which is something I haven't done before. In all honesty I would have done it on the board but when I was placing my rocks I did a big pile on the board and ruined any chance of fitting Tony's first birthday Charlie on there so it ended up being around the front of the cake but I really liked the effect of it. For this message I used my brand new cake star plunger cutters, the smaller ones that I again opened in my um, cake room vlog and I just love the smaller cutters, they're really easy to use and they're much, they're way more suitable for cake letters. I still love the big set but these ones I'm going to use a lot more. So I used flour paste, cut it on my letters and then I used water to stick them to the cake and that was it. That is how to make an elephant pool cake. I really hope you've enjoyed that video and it's been a bit of a help for anyone who used to model a cartoon elephant. I will put a link through to the blog post underneath and a link to how to cover a cake in fondant if you need to see that. Don't forget if you're baking or cake decorating this week make sure you take photos and use the hashtag YesDarling on Instagram so I can see all our photos together. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please give it a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button. There are brand new videos every single Monday. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.